as organized as possible. So specifically through the podcast production lens, if you, when you start to manage more and more clients and more and more podcasts, it can start to get messy really quick if you're not as organized as possible. So the more organized you can be in terms of laying out your work plan for the week, if you have a team, your team's work plan for the week, excuse me, pardon me there. The more organized you can, the more organized you can be about laying out the production plan for you, for your team, and getting ahead of that to the point that your clients are getting back episodes like a week in advance, as opposed to last minute, the day before the episode is released. I'm Janet Ahmed, host of Hacks and Hobbies podcast and a digital presence advisor at HumbleZone. This episode is brought to you by Home Studio Mastery. I launched a consultation and course program to help podcasters and course creators to create a space in their homes that will reduce the friction of creating content and appearing their best when showing up on camera. The pandemic gave us a lot of issues, but this one is here to stay. We're now so much closer to our audience thanks to video becoming more popular and affordable. I help guide folks who want to create Hollywood-worthy studios to not only capture great content, but also build more confidence, more authority, and be more comfortable in front of the camera. If I can do it, you can too. And with my help, you can do it faster. So if you'd like to learn more, visit homestudiomastery.com and how you too can create a home studio that brings out your personality, professionalism, and possibilities. Thank you for tuning in to Hacks and Hobbies with your host, Junaid. We're visited by our amazing guests coming from all walks of life. We want to learn their story, their struggles, and their journey on how they got to where they are today. So stick around. Max Branstetter is the founder and podcast producer at Max Podcasting, a podcast production business where he's edited over 1,000 podcast episodes and helped launch over two dozen podcasts. He's the host of the Wild Business Growth Podcast, featuring over 235 wild entrepreneurs, including the minds behind WordPress, Stacy's Pita Chips, NFL Red Zone, Big Mouth Billy Bass, and the voice of Bart Simpson. He writes the podcasting to the Max Newsletter, where podcasting meets entrepreneurship. Max, thanks so much for coming on to the podcast, man. Of course, and thank you so much. And actually, uh, you're on such a roll with my last name. If you just want to call me Brandstetter the entire interview instead of Max, like we can do that too. So that works. <laughs> All right, Mr. Brandstetter. Uh, what's going on is on the episode, I love to discover our you know, origin stories for my guests and where, you know, what big change they did in their lives to get to where they are today. Because we go through so many different journeys. We go through so many different levels of growth that sometimes we forget where we come from. So I, I'd love to get your origin story down so that my audience can also listen and, oh, wow, Max started with this. I could totally do what he's doing. So Max, take it away, man. Yeah, appreciate it. I, I think for me, I always point to the fact, point back to the fact that I grew up with a family business. So I had a very what I call non-traditional upbringing based on the fact that I didn't come home from school every day and wait for my parents to get home from work and catch up on their day that day. Like I got home from school every day, ran downstairs to my parents where their office was uh, for our family business out of our basement and would catch up that way. So they were there working from home. They started working from home a long time before a lot of people did. And I just have very fond memories of growing up. My parents started this business called Hippo Direct the year I was born. And I just love being surrounded by the business and learning about family business, learning about entrepreneurship, and it sparked something in me from an early age that I knew I'd love to start a business one day, but I had absolutely no idea what sort of kind of business. If you asked me when I was a kid, I probably would have said something dealing with sports because I always love sports and maybe if there's something in the sports business world that I could do if I couldn't become a professional baseball player, which obviously is not true. But growing up with that is super impactful and shaped my career and still super close to my parents to this day, for obviously on the personal side, but also from the business side and frequent chats with them about the business side of things. So that was very foundational for me. And I love, I totally love that because some of these things, some of the 
upbringings that we are in shapes where we end up with, depending on the positive or negative impact it, it has on our lives. And obviously you had a very pot, your parents had a very positive impact on your life where you're like, I get to hang out with my parents every single day. And I'm the same way. My, my kids come in, they're done when they're coming home from school, they come down here, hang out with me. I'm like, Oh my God, what are we doing today? What live are we talking about today? Who's the person on the call today? And my daughter will jump in and she will like say, hi, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we've solved the puzzle here. I think you're actually my father. So this all, it all blends together. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious, man. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm honored. Tell me what was one of your defining moments in your life that enabled you to say, okay, this is what I want to be doing after the fact of you didn't know what you were going to do, but you knew that you wanted to do work from home or, or run your own business because you watched that in your pants. But what was that one pivotal moment that said, hey, this is what I want to be doing for the rest of my life or for, for a better part of my life that's going to define um, where I bring my main income from. Yeah, for me, I think it was a process of several years of narrowing it down and focusing in on, okay, what what do I actually enjoy doing? What's fulfilling to, to me? What can you actually make a living off of? What's something that wouldn't mind at all doing every day of the year? And so out of college, I got a corporate job. So I worked in brand management for a few years. And I love some of the marketing aspects of that. And there's a lot that I loved and, and, and learned about the job. But I also learned a lot of the, the downsides of, for me, corporate just wasn't a great fit. Like I needed to do something more entrepreneurial. I, I needed to do something where I was felt like I was starting something new, was solving a solution and doing something that I was a bit more passionate about. So that, that kind of sparked the idea in the first few years out of college. And I'm going back and working with, my, with that working with that family business for a bit and it's crazy going from a big corporate job to a smaller mm -hmm. family business where you're going from an office to everybody working remotely yeah. i was living in new york at the time working from my studio apartment huge as you can imagine no i'm just kidding but <laughs> it was around the time of you know, shortly after starting the business that we were trying to figure out ways to market the company and in talking with my dad, we just kept going back to this idea of podcasting. Podcasting mm -hmm. was getting more and more popular. And with the business, we were helping out and working with a lot of other small business owners and fellow entrepreneurs. So we had the idea of, okay, what if we had a podcast that we learned from other entrepreneurs mm -hmm. about the ways they grow their business and the ways that they grow as a leader and both on the professional and the personal side. And I know this is pretty meta because this is what my podcast talks about. You're in this space as well. And it's yeah. an awesome space to be in and of learning from other aspiring entrepreneurs. But the true insight came once I actually started that podcast, which is the wild business growth podcast, still my mm -hmm. podcast to this day, it became really, it was like this explosion of ideas of, wow, podcasting is like this really cool thing. And it has ton, tons of benefits. It can do great thing for your business. Mm -hmm. It can be great for you on the personal side and help you on the, from the communication standpoint. But also it takes a ton of time to podcast and it takes a ton of time to launch a podcast, to edit a podcast, to yes. line up guests, everything, things that super well. And so the insight eventually came, all right, this as opposed to just focusing on doing a podcast for the business and interviewing people and focusing on that side of things, what if I started a podcast service to take all of these podcasting tasks off the mm -hmm. plate of other podcasters and other aspiring entrepreneurs? And over time, after doing that for uh, probably a couple of years at the time, it became clear this is actually its full separate business like this. Yeah, it's been great to do as part of the family business, but really it deserves yeah. its own separate business. And so that's where Max Podcasting spun out of Hippo Direct. Very cool. I don't know who this Max Podcasting is, but Stetter, what's amazing is that you solve a problem not only for yourself, because as you're solving your problem and running your own podcast, and as podcasters and other podcasters are listening, we know exactly how much time it takes and energy so finding that i can help other entrepreneurs enter this space is such a beautiful thing because not only are you saving them time but you're also helping them create a marketable evergreen product that they can that can stand on its own and 
in business, they talk a lot about sales and marketing is one of the hardest things that any business can do. And especially because the ads that we see on the internet, the ads that we see on television are, are of, of a quality that's designed for the mass public. But if you really think about it, you just need to market to your small niche audience to really solve that problem that your company talks about. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's part of that process of zeroing in on your target market is it, you have to actually be doing something yourself in order to experience mm -hmm. all the pain points to it. So I think that's yeah. absolutely spot on. And that's where you get some really good feedback early on of where <laughs> it's almost like you get feedback from yourself of like where where those key pay point, where those key pain points are and where mm -hmm. a solution could be most valuable. Yeah. And I think human beings, there's two types of human beings, right? People who want their problem solved, but they don't have the time to solve it. And I'm like, Hey, I'll hire somebody to solve it. And then there's people like us who are, we are inventors and we are creators and we solve our problems and offer these solutions for others. And it's beautiful synergy between the types of people that there are because we're both getting that help that we need. Absolutely. Spot on. All right. So we went through a little bit of your journey on how you got started, the inspirations you had from your parents, the motivations to start your own company and which was the lack of corporate bureaucracy. What's what say you, the connection that there's really a lot of there's a lot of lack of connection or personal bonding that happens at corporate because it's all thinking about the bottom line go, which is really good because the company needs to survive. But then it becomes a very being a just a brick in the wall as opposed to the brick itself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the and don't get me wrong, like I made some amazing friends there and there's so many elements of my experience in the corporate world that I'm super appreciate if I could pronounce that correctly appreciative of and learned a ton from but yeah there are there I, I think it's very tough once a certain once an organization gets to a certain size to yeah. keep that to keep that like focus on camaraderie and like such a strong amazing culture while not getting like too worried about the financial side of things so it's it, it makes sense like companies get that way but it's definitely a, a tricky thing to nail down it is. And some companies that we could point at that have gotten it nailed down is companies like uh, Microsoft or Google or Apple, maybe in the beginning, but over time, all things, all good things must have some kind of flaw. And anyways, that would be a talk for another topic or topic for another talk, something like that. I, I like the alliteration. You got a lot of T's there. We'll roll with it. <laughs> <laughs> got to roll with it. All right. Mr. Branstetter. Let's take a quick five minute break. And then when we get back, you're going to share three hacks to take away for the superpreneurs listening to our conversation so that they take it away and apply it towards their own businesses. Perfect. Can't wait. I'm Janet Ahmed, host of Hacks and Hobbies podcast and a digital presence advisor at HumbleZone. This episode is brought to you by Home Studio Mastery. I launched a consultation and course program to help podcasters and course creators to create a space in their homes that will reduce the friction of creating content and appearing their best when showing up on camera. The pandemic gave us a lot of issues, but this one is here to stay. We're now so much closer to our audience thanks to video becoming more popular and affordable. I help guide folks who want to create Hollywood-worthy studios to not only capture great content, but also build more confidence, more authority, and be more comfortable in front of the camera. If I can do it, you can too. And with my help, you can do it faster. So if you'd like to learn more, visit homestudiomastery.com and how you too can create a home studio that brings out your personality, professionalism, and possibilities. Hey guys, welcome back. We've been talking with Max Brandstetter and he's got three hacks to share for you so that you can apply it in your 
business right away. Perfect. And three is one of my favorite numbers because I've never said that before. It's not actually like my favorite number, but it is a number where you can memorize three things. It's not too many. Mm -hmm. So thank you. I really appreciate you <laughs> lining this up. But my, fir my first hack is to leverage your network because, and this is especially relevant for anybody with the podcast or YouTube show, any sort of community where you have subscribers and connections because that network, as long as you stay on everybody's good side and check in with people every now and then, and just be like a good, genuine, nice person, that network stays with you and grows with you throughout your career. And when you're at the point of launching your own business or launching a new podcast, launching a new video show, something like that, leveraging your network can be the difference between a, an okay, not so exciting launch and a launch where holy cow, we went from zero to 60 and now have tons of momentum with our mm -hmm. brand new thing. So when I look back and started Max Podcasting, leveraging my amazing network of wild business growth podcast guests made the difference in it being like, oh, I don't know if this is a real business to like, hey, we have a lot of clients quick and now we have other problems to worry about, but good problems <laughs> to worry about. <laughs> so that's well, my first nice. one, leverage nice. your network. My second hack is to be as organized as possible. So specifically through the podcast production lens, if you, when you start to manage more and more clients and more and more podcasts, it can start to get messy really quick if you're not as organized as possible. So the more organized you can be in terms of laying out your work plan for the week, if you have a team, your team's work plan for the week, excuse me, pardon me there. The more organized you can, the more organized you can be about laying out the production plan for you, for your team, and getting ahead of that to the point that your clients are getting back episodes like a week in advance, as opposed to last minute, the day before the episode is released. All that is what really identifies like what a really smooth, like humming business is in the podcast production space. And that applies yeah. to other businesses as well. But the more organized you are, the more you take the time to really plan things out, especially in terms of delivering things to your clients and in customer satisfaction, the better it will bode for your business and for being able to pronounce that line uh, without nice. tripping over it. I can't promise that <laughs> one. But so then the third one is to focus on quality. So in the podcast production space, each year there's, there, there's I don't know what the latest stat is, like, oh, there's 4 million podcasts now, there's 40 podcasts launch every second. There's stats yeah. like that. Podcasts coming up from everywhere. But there's a huge difference in terms of podcasts that are put together in awesome quality and people really enjoy listening to and podcasts that somebody just quickly threw together and you can tell like there was no attention put to the audio quality, the video mm -hmm. quality. Um, one of my biggest personal pet peeves is when somebody is inserted an ad in the middle and the ad is like seven times as loud as the voices or 10 times quieter than the voices and it's literally painful yeah. to listen to. So. If you can stand on your hill, as they say, and say, all right, our differentiator is going to be a focus on quality, that's something that really resonates with people. And that's something that your clients will be forever thankful to you for, because of course they'll need your help and what you help with yeah. doing it as far as making sure there's quality for the actual recording. But also there's a lot of quality that goes into play when you're going through the post-production process. Totally. So through editing, even through your marketing materials, whatever you can do to make that the highest quality possible, that reflects back super positively, not only on your clients and their podcasts, but you as your business as well. So it can be a real strong point for you. So these three hacks are leverage your network, stay as organized as possible, and keep that focus on quality. And hopefully those are quality enough answers for you. See what I did there? No, those are really good. I love it. Thank you so much, Max Brandstetter. Uh, that, those were really good. Having leveraging network is really important because people is what brings the energy into your business, right? So you gotta have people, gotta have a good system and a definite focus on good quality, man. What's going on with these words? All right. Hey, they, they get me all the time, but it's, I, it's words are tough these days. They're not getting easier. No, they're not. <laughs> all right. Let's take a quick rundown of these rapid fire questions that I like to ask my guests. Number one, what is the one hobby that you wish you got into? Ooh. When I was a kid, 
I drummed and play guitar and there's something about drums that I really like. but at a certain point I just got away from it and as you live to you're living with roommates you're living in a more city environment it's pretty tough to pull a drum set so it is something that I love doing if there was a drum set right next to me right now I'd play it all night I love it yeah. but I haven't drummed in way too long so I wish I stuck with it but I think at some point later in life I'd love to get back into it more yeah man get some of those electric drums that's what what's his name Ant-Man Paul Rudd did him. Paul Rudd. His, right. Just put those headphones on. Just. Tick, 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 tick. <laughs> yeah, those. Are, it's always a good time. But yeah, you got to. My parents were very super supportive. So I got lucky as a kid in terms of playing the drums. But you hear some stories of families and parents that are not so kind to it, which right. I get as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Our next question. What did you want to be when you were a child? Oh, I actually answered this at the start of the episode without thinking of it. My first love was baseball. And so a professional baseball player is what I wanted to be. Nice. And then going back to the last answer, I think at some point it would have been a, a rock and roll star. So all things that everybody achieves, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> I think do. a doctor, do. I think a doctor at a checkup one time when I was a kid would roll his eyes when I told him that I'm like, Hey, look, like there's baseball players and rock uh -huh. stars out there like people do it but obviously it's much harder to do that much more common to go into the business world or do something else sure absolutely all right next up what is your favorite movie or tv show favorite all time is probably breaking bad mm -hmm. and i know that's cliche but i i think i'm going to start rewatching it again soon because finish better call saul which is amazing and it's got oh man i need to finish got the mine. juices yeah, it's got the juices yeah. flowing from those. Awesome. Got me wanted to watch it again. But yeah, Breaking Bad's an all-timer. Nice, because cause Better Saul Call is like the prequel to Breaking Bad, right? Yeah, and then they blend it. There's some parts of it they splice in that happen after Breaking Bad as well. Oh, but it's mostly a prequel. I like it. I like it. I think I've seen three seasons or four. I can't remember. I need to go back and check with the last episode I watched so I can go catch up i think it's all on netflix now yeah yeah i think they're up to speed on netflix yeah so nice. it's great the vince gilligan the creator behind those shows is so i think a, a true creative genius it keeps you on, on the edge of your seat or yeah, your math lab no i'm just kidding all right <laughs> <laughs> all right next up what movie would you choose if you max brandsatter got to play a character in it oh that is an incredible question I would. I always thought the James Bond movies and the character James Bond were just awesome. I think you got the travel there, mm -hmm. plenty of beautiful people involved, mm -hmm. <laughs> just doing really cool things and yeah, action and crazy scenes like that. So I, I, any of the James Bond movies, we'll, we'll give the nod to Tom Cruise and Mission Impossible as well. All, all, all the action movies like that would be pretty cool to play. One of the action movies I, I recently watched where... Ben Stiller and Tom Cruise. Ben Stiller was the stunt double for Tom Cruise. <laughs> and so this video is probably from 1999, right? And it was on <laughs> YouTube and I'm like watching this. And then all these things that Ben Stiller is doing and Tom Cruise is right there. It, it was just really hilarious watching this. It's, that it's was like, that's probably Zoolander era. Uh, yeah, Zoolander that was a Zoolander era. Cruise. Exactly. And yeah. he's, he's like coming in. Oh, great times. This really good time. All right, let, next question. Who is your favorite superhero? Uh, James Bond. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I I have like a weird nostalgia for, for Batman. Just growing up, I think Batman was, of course, loved the newer Batman movies, but mm -hmm. one of my earliest Halloween costumes, there's a very funny picture of me as like the old like 1960s Batman, like the nice. light gray. With the light uh, gray, and, uh -huh. I, and I had the little, and you could see my chubby cheeks on my face through through the Batman mask. So it was pretty <laughs> funny. I love the, the vintage Batman as well as the modern one. It's just, it's a really cool story. I know it's a common one, but. It is a really good one. I like it. Thank you. I believe Batman was one of my favorite characters initially as well. And then I discovered Iron Man. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Iron Man. The combination taken of I... tech and the, the bravado persona that just pulled me in. I, I don't think anybody 
would have predicted before Iron Man came out of like how huge that franchise and like the no. universe has become. That's crazy. Massive. That's Iron Man. So shout, shout out Ozzy Osbourne, Black Sabbath, whoever what that song was by. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, next up, and the last question. If you were a board game, what would it be? Ooh, there's... So it's actually one of our favorite board games we play right now. I'm going to say it, but edit this out after if you don't want any slight swear words in it. I don't know if this is considered. <laughs> the game is called Smartass. Okay. Uh, so I don't even know if that qualifies. It's referring to an animal. But it, ha- it has the animal on a board game. And it's basically, it's like Trivial Pursuit or like any of okay. those games where you're, it's like a trivia game where you shout out answers. But it's literally like one person draws the, the clue or draws the card and mm-hmm. starts listing down the clues that, to give you more detail for the guest. And everybody else is just shouting out the answers as much as okay. possible. So the reason I would pick that, one, it's really fun, but... I've just always loved trivia and that's like a, a brownie points thing, like something h- hidden gem of podcasting is like the more mm-hmm. podcasts you listen to and the more podcasts you edit, you become better and better at trivia because you have so much knowledge from like all these random categories. <laughs> so true. so any right. trivia game is a great fit, but I'm a big smart ass fan. I love it. Thank you so much, man. And where can the superpreneurs find you? Appreciate it. So quick, easiest way is maxpodcasting.com. And all the links to my socials are there. It's just my name, Max Brandstetter on social media. And you'll find the links to my podcast and newsletter and, and everything there. Sweet. Thank you so much, man. We're going to be sure to include all the links in the show notes as usual. And this was a fun conversation. And until the next episode, we'll catch you later. Awesome. Thank you so much. This is a real treat. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the episode. Thanks so much for listening to our guest on this episode. Please send me an email at junaid at hacksandhobbies.com to tell me what you loved about our guest today. You could find links mentioned in this episode on the hacksandhobbies.com website.